It's the Eagle Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Welcome to the Forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shoreham this week. The Forum brought to you by Hayes Med. And today's special guest, David Schramm, all the way from Stanford, California, but but in reality, it's full circle. Because <laughs> you kind of grew, you grew up in Hayes. Absolutely. Got and it. we were kind of talking a little bit before we went on camera today. I remember, David, when uh, we were all smaller and younger, and um, you're, I was saying this to David before we went on. I said, I think your mom was the original manager at the mall, and you were telling me the story about that, too. Yeah, she was was, uh, I remember the mall opened in 1972 and maybe three or four months after it opened she became the manager and uh, was manager there well into the mid 80s I think she stepped out of that in 1985 or so and so a lot of people knew your mom you know being around retail and and, and doing that with the mall but um, also your dad a lot of people knew him as well he was very well associated with um, raising money and, and helping uh, with Thomas More Prep Marion for a long long time yeah he um, uh, when he passed away, um, we calculated he had a 75-year relationship with TMP Marion. Uh, originally as a student, St. Joe's Military Academy, and came back in 67 and started in admissions for the academy, and then it became Thomas More Prep, and he did fundraising um, well into the mid-90s when he retired, and then even in retirement, he kept going to the games, living at the school, and, and was a fixture there for literally 75 years. Isn't it cool when somebody has a passion for something like that, uh, whether it's uh, it's the school or maybe it's uh, sports or it's something that they, they want to uh, give their time to in, in life. And and you've got something we're going to talk about in the second half of the show a little bit too, but you grew up in Hayes. You went to uh, Thomas More Prep as your high school and then moved on to other schools too. You were not a graduate of Fort Hayes. I kind of got this on, but you graduated Emporia State but you came back and helped uh, here at Fort Hayes and, and some other things as well along the way. Yeah, I started taking classes at Fort Hayes while I was still a student at TMP. And then in the summers, I would come back and take classes. And then uh, after graduating from Emporia State, I came back and started working on a master's at Fort Hayes and worked under Ron Fluhoff, who at the time was uh, uh, the fundraiser for the university, uh, helping with the Sheridan campaign to convert Sheridan Coliseum into what is now Beach Schmidt Performing Arts Center, where uh, my lecture is. <laughs> so it's, it's a, you've used the phrase a couple of times, Mike, about full circle, but this trip has a lot of full circle moments to it for me. And now you are, uh, well, you graduated finally. Did you graduate from Stanford University? No, I have the privilege of teaching at a university okay. that I'm not sure I could get into. Okay, um, you'd be able to get in. But I, uh, academically, I did my uh, MBA at NYU and then started teaching immediately at NYU and uh, then got recruited to come west. I've been at Stanford, I'm in my 13th year on the faculty there. And not only do I teach, but I'm also leading a scholars program, the Knight Hennessy Scholars Program. And uh, so I've got a wonderful dual role where I both do a lot of student facing activity, a lot of mentoring, creating programs, managing teams, but then I'm still in the classroom uh, at least two thirds of the year. So what do you what do you talk to the kids about? Is it is it uh, your life experiences, or you just help them along their uh, their path in life? So my teaching path is uh, all in communication, mostly oral communication, a little bit unwritten communication, and it's fascinating because I I draw back on material and information I learned as a student at TMP, at Emporia, and at Fort Hayes. Um, I teach similar things to what I taught my students when I was on the faculty at Thomas More Prep Marion. Uh, it's always been for me around how to write and speak effectively. And, uh, and so that's my teaching field. And then in terms of mentoring, it's a lot of work with students on just career opportunities and thinking about of what may be possible for them in their future that they hadn't considered before. And you probably see a lot of students, well, you've taught for a while now, you probably have seen students or the student body has changed dramatically just in the last five and 10 years. And you have to adapt as an instructor to that and maybe sometimes bring them back onto path a little bit. Well, it's interesting. Uh, one of the things that those of us who teach at the college level say, uh, every year in, in the fall, freshmen are 18 and you're one more year away from 18. So it certainly I felt more kinship early in my teaching career when I was closer in age to the students I taught. Um, but now, as you mentioned, I do have life experiences which come to bear in, in my teaching and in my mentoring. 
And, and that's something we want to talk about. We're going to take a break, but in the second half of the show, uh, you've been asked to come to Hayes to speak here on a pretty uh, a tough topic for some people. And and um, we'll get into that. I, I don't know really how to ask that, but we'll get into that in the second half of the show. And uh, we'll talk about this. And it's kind of a touching subject that you now speak about and try to help other people in life uh, with, with the same kind of uh, issues and then try to help them overcome those issues. Absolutely. So, I look forward to that. So we'll do that in the second half of the show. Again, da again David Schramm is our guest today here on the forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shoreham this week. So I want to join you here in just a moment. Be one of our weekly winners through football season with the Wolf Furniture Gallery's Gridiron Glory. <laughs> Players go to HazePost.com to pick weekly winners in the NFL. Prizes will vary. The best at season end will claim the grand prize, a complete living room set. Register at HazePost.com in the contest section. Football season could pay off big with the Wolf Furniture Gallery's Gridiron Glory. <laughs> Presented by Wolf Furniture Galleries, Eagle Marketing Solutions, HazePost.com, and Eagle Radio. Someone in here with us? Ghost Hunters is back with a new team, better tech, and more answers. This is my favorite part of the night. We had to flee our home. I've been doing this for 30 years. I chase the truth. Only with the truth can I truly help someone. Whoa! Ghost Hunters returns Wednesdays at 9 on AME. Consider the value that quality video content can bring to your business? MidAmerica Productions can provide professional visual media to effectively engage your target audience. We're a full-service video production company serving Salina and surrounding regions for over 35 years. Whether you need videos for promotion, sales, training, fundraising, or other purposes, our experienced team can deliver for you. Find us online at mapvideo.net. That's mapvideo.net. Welcome back to the forum. I'm Mike Kerner and for Gary Shoreham. Why, did I, why am I have trouble with his name all of a sudden? Jesus, I'm, I think I'm having old age issues. Three, two, and one. Welcome back to the forum. I'm Mike Kerner and for Gary Shoreman. And this is brought to you by Hayes Med. Today, David Tram with us. Uh, you're teaching at Stanford University and helping there and a lot of students. But you're in town, you've been in town uh, to speak uh, at the inaugural John Thorne's Hope and Healing, uh, I guess, presentations, what you'll be doing. And it's kind of a touching subject and it, a little bit about mental health, isn't it? Absolutely. I. Uh uh, I was honored when the Center for Life Experiences asked me if I would be the first speaker in what they hope will be an annual lecture in John Thorne's memory. Uh, most people know John Thorne's for his artwork, mm -hmm. both his uh, prolific work that he produced all through his life that many of us in Hayes have his artwork hanging in our homes, our banks, our, our offices. Uh, and then he also curated the art collection at uh, Hayes Med Center and the uh, award-winning Kansas artists that he has featured there in the art collection. But John was also um, somebody who dealt with a lot of tragedy in his life. Uh, in 1958, he lost his wife to suicide and had two small children at home. Uh, uh, his, his daughter Jenny, I think, was six months. His daughter Karen was, was two years old. And, um, and then later in life, John lost his daughter Jenny in a, in a car wreck uh, to uh, a drunk driver um, that uh, ran into her car and killed her. And he really, for many of us, was an inspiration of hope and healing, both how he managed the tragedies in his life, but also how he poured his grief into the creative energy of both his artwork and his art curation. And so the Center for Life Experiences does remarkable work, uh, not just in Hayes and Ellis County, but throughout Western Kansas, helping um, uh, families deal with a number of issues, suicide being one of them, but several issues in, in mental health and in well-being and, and in living a, a life that's flourishing. 
And, uh, and so they wanted to start a lecture series that would bring hope and healing mm -hmm. back to or into uh, this conversation, which when we talk about suicide or depression or any of the, of the other um, uh, mental illnesses that people may struggle with, uh, it's hard to, to talk about hope and healing because there's so much sadness in that. Um, and so I was invited back not because of my academic pedigree on the faculty at Stanford. Um, I too am a suicide attempt survivor. In 2003, I uh, made a very serious attempt on my own life and failed and am here today because um, not just because I failed in that attempt, but because I was able to access the um, mental health resources, the spiritual resources, the recovery resources to put my life back together. And, um, and I, I feel every day is really a blessing to be here. And if, if I can share about my journey and my experience in a way that helps other people recognize they don't have to go as far down the path as I went and that healing and hope is available right here in Hayes, right here in Ellis County, um, then I'm glad to be able to do that. Well, that was a, probably a tough time in your life, and a lot of people wonder, why, why did you try to do this? It was, was the help not there for you? How did you get to such a dark place? And, and what can people that, that don't experience that, what can we do to, to, to help you and help people we see every day that may be struggling? Or what signs are there out there? Because uh, we may not know. Uh, there's a it's lot a packed into those questions, Mike. Uh, I'm glad this is a four-hour telecast. Um, just joking for the viewers yeah, who are no. listening. Uh, you know, I think the, the, the most important thing I want to say about that is all of us have at our access the best tool to cut through depression, and that is conversation. And not, not putting up with, how are you today? Oh, fine, thanks. How are you really? Like going to that second level of question. Um, when somebody shares a struggle with us, a friend or a family member, um, to be there, to be active listeners, to be connected, but then to not be afraid to check back in, to not be afraid to say, hey, you know, last week you were sharing some stuff with me that was kind of heavy. Have you talked to somebody about that? Have you seen a therapist? Have you talked to a pastor? How can I help you? Um, it, it takes a lot to be vulnerable, especially here in Western Kansas. But when somebody does take those steps of vulnerability to honor that and, and be with it, you don't have to be a mental health professional. I have no training in this. I just have my own life experience. I can listen. I can help somebody get to a, 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 a treatment center. I can help somebody get to a, a text line or a phone line where they can get with a professional. That's all any of us can do. In my own experience, um, I, my family and close friends have often asked, you know, could we have helped in those few days in June of 2003 before I uh, attempted to end my life? And, and my answer was, you know, I was trying so hard to act like there was nothing wrong. I, I'm not sure what somebody could have done to have broken through my bravado. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so I would like to think that I would have been open to that, but it's, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. And what goes through your moment when, when you, you were, you're, you're trying to do this? Do, do you think back on that now and think, how, what, was, what was going on in my head? What, wh how could I maybe change things? Or do you, as that moment's happening, do the things unfold too? And like, why am I doing this? And, and uh, maybe I shouldn't, I should go back. You know? it's, um, it's complex. I, I, I talk about it, I share about it, um, and, and I also readily acknowledge, you know, I have no training in, in, in mental health and in, and in uh, the therapeutic arts. Um, I, I don't spend a lot of time rethinking the days before and that led up to it, because I can't undo that. I can't go back and, and undo that. But there is such a clear life line in my life, June 11th, 2003, before the attempt, after the attempt. What am I doing after the attempt to be sure that I never get back to that place again? For me, it's being active in, in, uh, in my faith, in my church, um, uh, committed in, in the relationship to my husband and my family, being present to uh, the kids that I'm raising, um, being uh, uh, 
in touch with my own recovery, both in my case, it involved drugs and alcohol, but also emotional healing, and, and being able to, on a daily basis, be sure that I'm taking steps that, that keep me further and further away from the dark night of the soul. And uh, I use the analogy I'll, I, in, in my talk uh, at, at uh, Beach Schmidt, I shared the analogy of um, when somebody's struggling with depression, it's, it's very similar to a brush fire. Um, if you have dry grass around your house, if it's hot outside, if there's high winds, all of those can contribute to a brush fire, but they're not gonna cause a fire until there's a lightning strike or a cigarette butt thrown out or an electric wire that shocks. And it's that combination of precipitating factors and a, a sparking event that will cause a fire. Same thing in mental health, I have to look at the precipitating factors. Am I you know, in touch with my relationships? Am I, am I, um, am I uh, you know, taking care of my own mental well-being? Am I doing things that you know, keep my grass wet rather than dry? And then I'm prepared if there is a strike of something, a tragedy that happens, a, a piece of disappointing news, a financial setback. Uh, it can't be the spark that will cause something devastating to happen if I've done good things to keep my own uh, grass cleared, uh, moisture, uh, and, and, and keep that well-being in mind. That's a good analogy. I like, I like that. Well, I'm glad you came back to Hayes and shared your story with a lot of people. Is there a website where people can go and read more about, about you or uh, uh, maybe what you're doing these days? So there's, there's three things I'm going to okay. offer. Um, one, absolutely here in Hayes, we are blessed with the Center for Life Experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, they originally were, were uh, housed out of the Hayes Presbyterian Church. They're now independent. They serve uh, people in the community of, of all faiths and, and all needs. And so uh, first thing I would recommend is contact the Center for Life Experiences. Second, if people want to see more about my journey, I did do a TED Talk on this in 2011. Um, eight years after my attempt, I finally went public with, with my, uh, my story. And if you've got four more minutes of time, you can go watch my, my talk on the TED website. And then the newest resource, particularly for if people are trying to work with young people, is the Crisis Help Text Line, 741-741. Uh, A lot of our young people in middle school, high school, and even college are more likely to text a counselor than they are to pick up a phone and call an 800 number or walk in and talk to somebody face to face. And so I think those are the three resources I would guide people to. Got a lot of great resources out there. I know that, that that's, that's, that's great in today's world. There's so much going on. So, so I appreciate you coming and coming full circle and coming back here and talking to us a little bit about your life. And nice to uh, see you again. Haven't seen you for a long time. It's my privilege. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the time. And uh, thanks for all you do to keep the community informed of things in the community. Very good. David Schramm is our guest today on the forum. Want to thank you and thank our sponsor, Hayes Med. I'm Mike Kerner. Have a great day.